I made the decision to start working out three years ago and I transformed my body to this, to this. I can't lie, there's definitely been a trial and error along the way, but the hardest part was starting. All right, let's be real with each other. How many times have you told yourself you're going to start working out, diet starts Monday, and you're gonna take a step closer to your fitness journey? Well, I've been there too. I've been consistently working out for three years and I was telling myself the same thing. But with three years of consistency, I went from this to this. I know three years can sound overwhelming, but I promise you it starts with day one. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to actually start your fitness journey. Step one, find your why. If your why is just because, or I want to look better in the mirror, I promise you your motivation will not last. I've been working out for quite a while and I still struggle seeing myself in the mirror sometimes. But I love what my why has built. My why is wanting to feel strong in the gym, having a lot more natural energy, and being able to control variables. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything and I will forever live by that. If you're doing the bare minimum now, you're probably doing bare minimum in every other aspect in your life, which is why I like to have a routine, feel strong in the gym, and do everything with a purpose. Before we even start the working out part, I want you to write down your your why. You can write it down in a notebook, you can write it down in your notes app, you can even write it down in the comments. I want you to come up with three non-negotiables. Having a clear why when you start your fitness journey will give you a clear purpose in what you're aiming for and what your goals are. And it's going to remind you why you started, why you're going to stay committed to your fitness journey, and give you a sense of purpose in your fitness journey in the first place. If you don't know your why, then why are we even doing any of this? Why are we deciding to put ourselves in 5 a.m. wake-up calls or 9 p.m. workout sessions? the early mornings, the late nights. We're not doing all this for no reason. So make sure you write down your why. Tip number two, be a doer, not a sayer. Do you know how many times I've heard people say, I want to start working out. I want to start a diet. Diet starts Monday. I've heard it so many times. You can go from I want to, to I will, I'm going to, I must. And at the end of the day, when you're a doer, not a sayer, you radiate that confidence and that respect within yourself. And automatically you're able to build that and trust yourself yourself with everything you say. Whether that's, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to start eating healthy. I've heard so many people be all talk and no action. And at the end of the day, I'm sure I've been there too. But when you do what you're going to say, you build that trust within yourself and then you're able to trust everything that you say. If you start hearing yourself say, I want to, I might, take a few steps back and say, okay, I came up with my non-negotiables. I'm going to, I must, I will. And I promise you, it'll change the entire game for you. You're telling yourself you're already going to do something. So you're one step ahead already. Tip number three, create a workout split and a routine that works for you. Look, we're all different. We all have different schedules. I don't expect your plan to be exactly like mine. I work out five times a week, but maybe you're a little bit busier than I am and you're only able to work out three to four times a week. Maybe you have a little extra time on your hands and you work out five to six days a week. Find a routine that works for you. We all have the same at 24 hours in a day, whether it's one hour or two. One hour and 24 hours is 4%. You can spend 4% of your your time in the gym to better yourself, to reach your fitness goals, whether that's getting some movement in, feeling more comfortable, getting stronger. Finding a gym routine can be something as simple as regimented days of the week that you'll be training, but also your home routine. So if that looks like getting your pre-workout ready, getting a cute little outfit on, doing your makeup, making yourself look good for the gym, keep that a consistent routine. Make it something you look forward to. I always say, look good, feel good. And I think that goes for anything in life. When you look good, you automatically get that natural energy that you've been looking for and you didn't realize that it was within yourself to get you motivated to work out in the first place and a little less anxious. I know a lot of us do get a little bit of that gym anxiety, but I promise you when you feel confident and comfortable in your own skin and what you're wearing, gym anxiety decreases. You feel more natural in the gym and you don't necessarily feel out of place. Figure out your preference. If you don't like working out late at night, you do not have to. If you don't like working out early in the morning, you do not have to. Maybe your preference is working out three days a week. Maybe your preference is working out five days a week. Figure out what you enjoy. I promise you it'll make it so much easier to stick with. Same thing goes with your workouts. If you like a certain machine, if you like a certain workout, if you like a certain exercise, or even if you like a certain type of cardio, do that. You do not have to do hit cardio if you don't want to. You do not have to do the, the two mile runs if you don't want to. You don't have to do the Stairmaster if you don't want to, trust me. I like to stay away from the Stairmaster. Your girl does not like doing that. Find your preference, find what you like to do, and you'll be able to stick with it much longer because let's be honest if you're not enjoying something whether that's a meal plan or a training plan you will not stick to it it's hard to stick to something that you're not enjoying so make sure when you reflect find out what you like find your preference 
you stick with that. Even if you don't like going to the gym or going on runs, you do not have to do that. Go outside, get some steps, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. But your working out could look totally different than my working out. There are so many different forms to working out. So at the end of the day, you have to find what you enjoy and what you like. I am a mid afternoon type of girl. I do not like working out late at night. And honestly, I love my sleep. I don't like necessarily waking up at 5 a.m. before I have to get my day started. I like to make time for myself in the middle of the day to go work out because I have enough food and that's when my energy is at its highest. So find when your energy is at its highest. Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a nurse, maybe you're working night shifts. Be realistic with yourself. Do not expect to work out six days a week doing an hour of cardio every day when that's not realistic for you. You have to come up with realistic goals for yourself and don't necessarily expect to go zero to 100 real quick. I love to say this, when you look at the top of a staircase, the only reason you can get to the top is if you take that first step. And then over time, you can continue to build on that, find your routine and find that momentum. Don't be unrealistic, set yourself up for success. Wouldn't it be so nice to just wake up one day and have abs, have all the energy, have all the motivation, have all the cute gym fits. That would be awesome, but it's not realistic. This sounds cliche, everyone says this, but progress does not happen overnight. We have to continue to build on that each day, make the cognitive decision to say, I am going to work out, I am going to eat healthy, I am going to get my steps up, I am going to drink my water. Progress is gradual. Don't be discouraged if you're not seeing the change overnight. It took me a while to see results, but it doesn't happen overnight, it happens over time. Be prepared to make sacrifices. Don't expect to keep the same exact schedule and fit the gym somewhere in there. Realistically, you're going to have to skip some of those parties. You're going to have to skip some of those get-togethers. You're going to have to skip those nights out with your friends to make the gym fit your own schedule. Some days, maybe even a lot of days, you sacrifice some of your sleep to go get up and reach your fitness goals. So I understand you're, you might be sacrificing social events or sometimes sacrificing some of your sleep to go work out. Sometimes you do have to sacrifice your flesh to go reap the benefits later. This fitness journey is not always going to be easy, but that's what makes it a fitness journey. <laughs> I want to be transparent. Don't expect every day to be easy and you're all motivated. You feel great. Energy is already 110% because I promise you, you're going to have days where you just don't want to go, where maybe going to the gym is the last thing you want to do. Stepping on the treadmill is at the bottom of the list, but that's what builds discipline and trust within yourself, especially if you told yourself you're going to go to the gym. You're going to do 10 minutes of cardio. Once you do exactly what you said you're going to do, you begin to trust yourself with everything that you tell yourself. Food is fuel. Carbs are not your enemy. I love carbs, especially before a workout because it does give you that extra energy that you need. Here's a secret coming from an online personal trainer. If you are not using your food, you store it as fat. When you eat a good meal, use it as fuel. Let it be the extra energy to go harder in the gym. Let it be that extra motivation to put more effort into your workout. And to be completely honest, when you are looking at food as the enemy and you're scared to gain weight, scared to see that scale go up, it will lead you to binging later because you're in that mindset of, I don't know when I'm gonna get this meal next and you just wanna eat everything that you see in front of you. When you make yourself moderate meals that will satisfy you throughout the day, you're less likely to binge. Trust me, I've been there, I've binged. I've been 30 pounds Happier before, but now I fuel my body with the portions and macros that are best for me. I've always struggled with my relationship with food, but then I had to take a step back and learn that food is not the enemy. Food is what keeps you alive, what sustains you, what helps you recover, what gives you energy. Food is such a great tool. To be quite honest, it is the best tool in your fitness journey. Of course, there's going to be a time and place where you need to have balance. So I like the 80-20 rule. Listen to your body for 80% of the week. On the other 20%, have that sushi. Have have that burger, go out for dessert, have a donut. It's all about balance. We don't want it to feel like I haven't had this in forever. I'm going to just eat this entire box of donuts because I haven't had this in so long. You want to be able to keep foods relevant so that way you're aware that food is always going to be there. And that is something I had to learn. I would clear out my cabinets because I was just craving it and I wanted to indulge. But in all reality, that food is going nowhere. For some people, it's very hard to find balance because you just feel guilty with everything that you eat. But you have to take a step back and say, I'm human. I have cravings. I enjoy my sweets. I love nice dinners. I love going out to breakfast, which is my personal fave. So take that as an opportunity to start listening to your body. Progress over perfection. Look, if we're 1% better every single day, we're doing something right. We're going in the right direction. As long as you're training 
with a plan that fits your schedule. Maybe you want to begin eating healthy and you just track one meal a day. Maybe you just want to just eat intuitively but make healthier options. That means you are getting 1% better each day. Maybe you're pushing yourself to that extra rep or that extra minute on the treadmill or a heavier set in your lift. That is progress. Focus on your progress. Do you feel more disciplined than you did yesterday? Do you feel more disciplined than you did last month? And honestly, you need to be proud of yourself. Make sure you give yourself the self-reflection that you need to understand that maybe you're better than yesterday. Maybe you're better than last week. Maybe you're better than last month. When you lack self-reflection, you go into a burnout and you don't realize how far you've come. You might lose sight of of your goals. You might lose sight of your vision. You might lose sight of, of your original why that we talked about in the beginning of the video. Make sure you understand it's progress, not perfection. That leads me into my last tip, avoid burnout. When you're working out with a plan that doesn't work for you, or when you're being very strict within yourself, that's going to lead you to a dark path that's very, very hard to get out of. Start slow. When you're enjoying something for so long and you're ready to take that next step, Take that next step. Nothing changes if nothing changes. No one can do it for you. You have to work on it yourself. That's when that self-discipline has to kick in. You go take your pre-workout, get ready for the gym, and go get your lift in. If you're here at the end of the video, congratulations for starting your fitness journey. I promise you, you will never regret it. No one has ever regretted starting their fitness journey. More often than not, everyone says that they wish they started sooner. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. If you're a real one, follow my Instagram. I post a lot more fitness content on there. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. East and the West, I'm racking up on my breath. Uh, power on me, I'm feeling just like a Tesla.